This is lesson 8, equivalent quadratic expressions, and the cooldown called writing equivalent expressions. Quadratic function can be defined by many different but equivalent expressions. Equivalent meaning they're the same value or do the same things, they just look a little different. For example, we saw earlier that the predicted revenue in thousands of dollars from selling a downloadable movie at X dollars can be expressed with this. That's the price per download, and then the 18 minus X, remember that's how the number of downloads would change as you increase the dollar amount, the cost. And then you can use the distributive property to work out this multiplication and get 18X minus X squared. That and that are equivalent expressions. They produce the same results, even though they look a little bit different. Sometimes a quadratic expression is a product of two factors that are each linear. So we have x plus 2 and x plus 3. Those are two linear factors, and we can write them as x times 2 times x plus 3. For us to be able to figure out how to multiply this out, sometimes it's helpful to draw a diagram. So here we have a rectangle where one side is x plus 2 more, and this side is x plus 3 more. So x plus 2 times x plus 3. What we can do then is we can look at each one of these rectangles here and find the area of each individual piece separately. So if this is a box that's x by x, its area is x squared, because remember x times x, x to the second power. This right here, well x times 2 is 2x's, 3 times x gives us 3x's, and then 3 times 2 is what gives us 6. And what we could do then is we could say, well, the total area of this thing is x squared plus 2x plus 3x plus 6. Or, simplifying, x squared plus 5x plus 6. Because these are like terms. They're the same kind of thing. It can be added together. So this right here and this over here are equivalent expressions. They give you the same results, even though they look a little bit different. And again, you can draw a picture if you need to. This is really helpful sometimes. What we see, though, if we don't want to draw a picture, or if the picture makes sense and you want to move on and not have to draw a picture every time, what's happening up here in this diagram is we take x times x and x times 3. And then we take 2 times x and 2 times 3 to get each of these areas here. What we can do is we can use the idea of the distributive property and expand it beyond just a simple x times x plus 2. We can have much more complicated distributive property type problems. And for us to find an equivalent of x plus 2 times x plus 3 without any parentheses, what we can do is we can take this x and we can say, well, I'm going to take x times x and x times 3. And we would get x squared plus 3x. Once we do that, then we would look at the second number and say, well, okay, but I need to multiply this by that and also by that. And I would get 2 times x plus 3, which is 2x, plus 2 times 3, which is 6. And then, simplifying this, we've got x squared plus, well, 3x and 2x are like terms, so we have 5x's and then an extra 6 there at the end. So let's look at the cooldown. Use a diagram to show that 3x plus 1 times x plus 2 is equivalent to 3x squared plus 7x plus 2. Draw a diagram, just like we did before, where you're going to have 3x and 2 more times an x and 2 more. Fill it in. Add together your like terms and see if it comes out to be that. Number two, is x plus 4 squared equivalent to that? Well, you could draw a diagram again. x, 4, x, 4. You could draw a diagram again. Or, x plus 4 squared just means x plus 4 times x plus 4. Think about using the distributive property the way that we talked about 
for this particular lesson and see if it comes out to be equivalent to that. If you have any questions, let me know.